It's time for That Was The Woke That Was with Andre Walker. Hello and welcome to That Was The Woke That Was, the topical quiz show that goes through all of the wokest stories of the week. On my team tonight, we've got Anna McGovern and Lacey Butcher and Lizzie Cundy and the beautiful, the gorgeous Pete Barnes. Let's get this party started. OK, so first of all, to Lizzie and to Pete. According to a new book, Meghan Markle was obsessed with being queen when she met Prince Harry and thought he was the heir to the throne. Now, listen, I don't know if any of you know this. But... What, what, what was it, Lizzie? Were you ghosted by Meghan Markle? <laughs> How did you know I was ghosted by yeah. Meghan? Well, look, I did know her in the early days and she was obsessed with the Queen, Buckingham Palace. You've got old pictures of her outside Buckingham Palace when she was a young girl. Yeah, I've, see, I've still, seen, those, seen those, yeah. Mm. And she used to always say to me, Lizzie, how do I get to the throne? And I said, down the corridor to the <laughs> sound of a letter. No, no well, you honestly. just give her directions to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but no, I mean, I'm sure Meghan Markle just goes to bed at night going, Vida Veni Vici, thinking she yeah. came, she saw, she conquered, but she hasn't. No. I mean, she tried mm. to conquer America. She's come over here and she's tried to conquer us, and neither of, uh, neither of which have gone successfully. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm just thankful yeah. that her reputation is as diminishing as her acting career. But I think she, <laughs> she, she doesn't want... She knows she can't get the throne, but she wants to be President of the United States. Oh, but oh, sadly, God. as we know, Biden is running for a second term. So uh, there we go. I mean, the, the only thing you can say about Biden is at least he's not Meghan Markle. <laughs> <laughs> Although at this stage, you might think he is, which is definitely a worry. OK, so according to a new book, has Meghan Markle been obsessed with becoming Queen? And when she met Prince Harry, did she actually believe that he was in line to the throne? I'm going to say you, yes. Do you think it's true or go true? true? It is false! Oh. Wow! Oh, there we go. Very humble. <laughs> I'm shocked at that one. OK. Diane Abbott has been suspended from the Labour Party after saying Jewish people do not suffer from racism. She made the claim in The Observer, which she said she sent as a mistake. Come on. She knows that she's made a huge mistake, so now she's trying to say, oh, it was just a mistake when we all know the truth. Funnily enough, I was watching on the Mike Graham show when they were talking about the fact that uh, the theory goes uh, in the Jewish community that because Jewish people assimilate, they're associated with Western culture, and the people who hate Jewish people just hate Britain, just hate America, just hate Australia, just hate New Zealand. And that's why kind of people are on Jews' sides in all this, because they recognise that people come for Jewish people first and then they'll come for the rest of society. Any truth in that, Lacey, do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I totally agree with that sentiment. But how oblivious is this woman? I mean, how naive does she have to be? She's clearly got her shoes on the wrong feet once again. Yeah. Uh, something I mean, is, that, is that literal or figurative? No, she, there was a moment yeah. where she had uh, mismatched shoes on, wasn't absolutely. it? Yeah. She's, 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 she's sort of like, she talks down, she does it. Andrew! Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think so the, thing always, the thing that always makes me laugh was when you see people on the TV go, people used to think I were thick at school, mm. but now I've become a Labour MP. <laughs> That's yeah. proved them wrong. Absolutely. Has it really? <laughs> Has it really? Uh, <laughs> Good question. For, for it trying to be a party that's now trying to stamp out anti-Semitism, I yeah. mean, this has just set them back. God knows how many steps. As I say, I don't know how ignorant or oblivious this woman is, but to publish your draft... Yeah, but she wrote the letter observer. herself. Yeah, exactly. It's so ludicrous. I have no. to admit, this is the bit of this entire thing that is yeah. really annoying me. They always say that it's usually the cover-up that gets you. Mm. I actually think it's her apology that's yeah. covering this. <laughs> it's made because it worse. I know for a fact that everybody in this room right now has written uh, drafts for uh, newspapers, mm -hmm. magazines and all the yeah. rest of it. And my first drafts are usually riddled with spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes, not anti-Semitic comments. No, <laughs> like, exactly. Because the thing is, it's not like it's just some kind of language problem where you just need to tidy it up or something. No. This is the entire yeah, point of her yeah, argument. But, you, but she she wrote that, she read it, and, and she sent it. No, yeah. no, no, then, that's, no, that's not true, because what the Jewish Chronicle have discovered, she read it and she sent it, and then, because she didn't have her proper address on it, she sent it a second yeah. time, three hours later, identical. But yeah. then she, her way of trying to get out of it is absolutely mm. disgusting mm. for me. And this racism is running through yeah. the Labour Party mm. and it keeps coming back, yeah. biting Keir Starmer oh. on the derriere. And there he is saying, oh, no, we're stamping this out. Yeah. He's the one that was backing Jeremy Corbyn. Oh. He's the one that originally, a few years ago, would have had Jeremy Corbyn as our Prime Minister. Well, was it, wasn't, wasn't Derry Irving the uh, Lord Chancellor? Oh, Derry Irving. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know why we were biting the <laughs> former Lord Chancellor. But, but they, they're, they're going to struggle with this Labour. Yeah. I'll just say, with Keir Starmer, racism. his reaction to this is very interesting because they're trying to pitch it as, oh, well, he acted really quickly. It shows the Labour Party's taking it more seriously. Well, if he'd taken it seriously, this incident wouldn't have happened. Mm. Yeah. It's not like yeah. Diane Abbott is some councillor in some bit of the country but you can't point to on a map. She's a very prominent Labour MP. Mm. Most people know who she is. So it clearly is still a problem. But most interesting, he was, he was giving an interview and he was asked three times, was the comment anti-Semitic? Mm. And he struggled to actually say yes. Uh, but Pete, and I thought that was absolutely incredible but, to but me. But Pete, why are you surprised that, yeah. that Captain in middle yeah. ground, lieutenants sitting yeah. on the fence you wouldn't have side. Yeah. a strong opinion on anything. anything. Well, I mean, I, the point is, is it just proves that Abbott and Corbyn are still two peas in a well, lovely well, little pod. No, well, let's, <laughs> let, let's just stick with this, Lacey, for a second, because you've asserted that this is uh, a fact that he's just weak and he's always in the centre ground. Is it that he actually agrees and just knows that he can't do anything about racism in the Labour Party because it's so endemic now. Well, I think there are two different parts to that. I think that there's not a lot he can do simply because of the wide divisions within the party itself. Yeah. But whether he actually agrees with it, I don't think that's something we can all comment on because I don't think there's enough basis perhaps to go on assertively. Um, but no, it, it's just a horrific thing that once again, Labour have, have, have floundered. Yeah, yeah, but they have to get rid of Diane Abbott once and for all. Mm. I mean, she will be a thorn in his side. I'd rather have Ross Abbott than Diane Abbott, <laughs> I'll tell you. But she is one of the longest serving members well, of Parliament. Yeah. And she it's should know better. I, I think she's a disgrace. She and she a... should know about racism mm. and know yeah. how it feels. And it's so demeaning she, to every other group. Imagine, imagine if it was a white MP. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. And imagine if it had been a white MP saying that racism doesn't exist for another minority. Exactly. It would be outrageous. A Tory MP at that. Yeah, the statistics exactly. that upset Diane Abbott so much was that 55% of Jewish people said that they'd been victims of racism, 50% of black people from the Caribbean, and only 30% of black people from Africa. The amazing thing was, of course, about this, is it's literally a survey of the people concerned. And so she's arguing that the people in the Jewish community who felt discriminated against actually didn't have a right to say anything about it. Now, it may well be that these people are overly paranoid, I mean, you'd be fairly paranoid, yeah. wouldn't you, yeah. mm -hmm. if you were the generation or two behind people who died in the Holocaust? Exactly, yeah. and it isn't a competition of, yes. of who feels like more well, ra racism. You know, yeah. how well, dare she? How dare she? Well, like, she has I, to go. I, what's really quickly just to add on to this is one thing that's really disgusting to me is the way that so many people in the media, a bit on the left, have tried to kind of diminish this by saying because Diane Abbott has faced racism in the past, that somehow she's got a free pass on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, they, yeah. and they keep saying, oh, well, we need to talk about racism in the the kind of the traveler community and all the rest of it, saying, like, you can't have that conversation if a sitting member of the Labour Party of 36 or 38 years can't tell, can't acknowledge mm. that it's racist in the yeah. You can't move on the conversation if you can't name like, the problem. We've but, got... but hang on a second, can I just ask you, Pete, just sticking with yeah. that? I mean, look, I watch Labour Party conference, and they always stand up going, as a lesbian, or as a gay man, <laughs> or as a woman, oh. or as a black person, I just feel like everything now that you say in politics has to be qualified with this. Yes. You don't know anything about being a woman unless you're a woman. Now, look, I personally believe that I can defend women's rights without being a woman. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Does anybody remember this thing called empathy was a thing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, yeah. When, when did that stop being a thing? Like, I get this whole, you've got to walk, a, a, what is it, 100 miles in yeah. some shoes or whatever, whatever the, say, the saying is. But I, you are completely right. Like, everything has to be qualified now just for you allowed to have an opinion. And I'm like, when it comes to tackling racism, it is a kind Kind of, ironically, it's a black and white issue, <laughs> for want of a better uh, phrase. Yeah, and I'm think. sorry, there is no wiggle room on this. And I am sick. I, this, this story has really infuriated me. I have to admit, I've got yeah. really annoyed me. And I but think it, what, the, identity politics, it is a Labour issue more yeah. so than the oh, right, yeah, right wing. And I said it before and I'll say it again. If it was a pale, male, stale, right wing MP, think of the uproar that there would be. That, exactly. Contrast exactly. what exactly. Diane Abbott has received. Yeah. Come on, Lacey, defend us. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and Ginger's got a mention. As well. Let's just ask you whether it's true that Diane Abbott has been suspended from the Labour Party for making anti-Semitic remarks. Is it true or false? Yes, yeah, it's absolutely. true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> OK, Netflix. Netflix is being sued by an Egyptian lawyer for casting a black woman as Cleopatra. <laughs> Oh, this oh this story word. is Tell me not! But I, I, one thing I will say, this story is, is actually quite a complex story. There is, It's not just the Netflix bit of it that we have to talk about. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. 
there's, there's, it's going into this theory, because in Egypt, they're very protective over their national identity. Mm. There was a TV series where a pharaoh had blonde hair, and that TV show was cancelled within, like, days of it airing. So, like, uh, they have a kind of, a kind of history on this, on this uh, issue, but... It is, uh, th there was a change.org petition that got taken down that had nearly 200,000 signatures on it. Like, this is a real movement that people are furious so at this, in Egypt, not just because of the is this Is this an element of, and we hear it all the time, mm. cultural appropriation, where people from North Africa are saying, no, we are distinct from people yeah. from African, uh, say, the, the subcontinent. We don't want to be portrayed as them. Is yeah. that the point? Yeah, it's exactly this. So if the, what you're talking about there is known as Afrocentrism. Right. And it's this idea that everybody in Africa kind of shares the same uh, cultural identity, which is just inherently not true. Yes. And, and this is where the big pushback has come from by, from a lot of people. I find it very interesting that the actress who's been cast um, has gone very defiant over it. And she said, you've got to come at me with facts. And there was a guy who's called <laughs> Dr. Nadir, uh, Nadir Hawass. And he is one of the top Egyptologists in the world. He literally wrote the book on ancient Egypt. And he said, Cleopatra is not black. And right. everybody just keeps sending this actress this, <laughs> no. this screenshot of this tweet that he said. That, it's no, like, how many more facts sorry. do you need? Absolutely no point in history has Cleopatra ever yeah. been depicted yeah. as black. Her heritage is it's, Greek. Yes. Yeah. It's Greek. It's, it's in different. no way. I know. Absolutely. Hey, hang so on if a we're second. talking about cultural pre appropriation, we're taking advantages away from potentially an amazing Greek actress who could yeah. portray it in such a wonderful way, but no. I, I, my dad's Greek. I could do it in drag. You could do it. <laughs> you could do it. What, that what, that what, would be frightfully what, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what could Mark Anthony want more than your Uncle Andre? <laughs> oh God, what could possibly go wrong? But surely acting is the whole acting. point is yeah. acting. Yes. Look, yeah. I, I, my, my my son studied as an actor um, and he played a part where he was a total different nationality. It, that's what acting is all yeah. about. Look, yeah, you but, know, yeah, but, whether you're straight, you can yeah, play yeah, a, a gay actor, can play a straight actor. But Lizzie, but Lizzie, actor, please... but Lizzie I, I inherently agree with that, but that's not been the direction of travel, has it, recently? The direction of travel's been that if you attempt to play somebody who's disabled, if you're not disabled, mm -hmm. it's a disgrace. Black, if you're white. I mean, certainly, uh, blackface is considered objectionable. I mean, I don't understand how you can object to blackface and not object to drag, because to me, it's absolutely the same thing. But, but even though I agree with you, Lizzie, do you not accept that that's... That's, that's having one rule for one person, a different rule for somebody no, else. Because that's the whole point of acting, you're playing a part. But I that's think, the whole uh, point. With this one, I think it's slightly different because yeah. Cleopatra was a real person. So we're like, we, you know, we just, we know things about it. It's not like a right. fictional character where I think you but can't Liz have Taylor a lot. But Liz Taylor played her originally, yeah. so it's yeah, not exactly. like she's Liz American. Yeah, exactly, Liz Taylor. You know? but, well, Liz Taylor yeah. had a similar number of partners, hasn't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so was that the way to this morning? You know, you're on a slippery slope now, yeah. and, and this is getting too silly. And it's but the whole it, point of becoming an actor is to play these different roles, absolutely. have different accents. Yeah. But you know, I think and the, the point of it is, I think it's because they should, they're trying to promote black women, isn't it? Yeah. And I think this is something that they're now, you're seeing a lot more on the TV and movies. Um, I think especially when it's such a big part of our history, you wouldn't want to portray that accurately. But, but the only reason they've casted a black woman is for, you know, to get black women heard I, in I, the screen. Anna, when, when I think it was Akala spoke at the Oxford Union, he was saying that all ancient Egyptians were black Africans and actually that we're being deeply racist by portraying them with the colour they've got today. I mean, I find that yeah. an odd suggestion. Right, yeah. But, um, I mean, Cleopatra was Greek, so she yeah. was not a black yeah. woman. So it's, it's a very strange choice to have a black woman playing Pete Cleopatra in that, you know, role. But it's, I mean, it's, it's, but it's the same as having a, a woman play James Bond for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally not right. And it looks like Or Doctor Who being played by a woman. Although yeah. I, There's I, a different. He's an alien. That's yeah. so <laughs> oh, I don't know. I <laughs> think it's different. No, I don't I'll know. What, I'll tell you what upsets me about... Um, uh, about James Bond and this whole idea of having a woman play. There were so many brilliant female spies in real life yeah, that you exactly. could copy. I mean, yeah. Baroness Trumpington, I mean, the British Trump. <laughs> I absolutely loved her. She was yeah. fantastic. Be Bexley Park worked all around the world. Why on earth you would need to steal James Bond, who, in many respects, was far less sound than Baroness? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, just don't get it. But, but it's just, it's, it's all about trying to change our culture and our society through film and television, isn't it, Lacey? Absolutely. Acting is acting is acting. So there was a film called, I think it was oh. The Woman King, and it had Viola Davis 
service in it. And it's about this kind of African tribal leader. Uh, and like they just completely wrote her as like this kind of heroine against slavery. She was in reality, this, this queen was selling her own people into slavery. It was the complete opposite. But they just wanted to have a very powerful black well, they, kind of warrior character. Exactly. And I was like, it's just not true. Okay. They did the same with Robin Hood. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Men in tights. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Okay, so uh, is Netflix being sued by an Egyptian lawyer for casting Cleopatra as a black woman to Anna and to Lacey? Yes, it's true, definitely. It's absolutely true! <laughs> now it's time to talk about our amazing prize this week. We've given away so many things, but this week it's a DVD <gasps> of an amazing clip from Have I Got News For You. Take it away. Further talks are taking place this week in Northern Ireland. Uh, the key to progress there is clear communication at all times. For an example of that, would you like to hear a listener who called into a talk TV discussion recently? Mm. Mm. Yeah. 25 years ago, I was near Kelton a farm. You were nearly killed on a farm? Yes, uh, yes. Or what yes, happened? Brother. What you happened? Knew this. Was it an animal? What happened? An animal? We thought it was... 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 We thought and I was cut, and I cut the, the chart was cut in two, I put it onto the air and I'm, and, and the mugger come around and saved me. Who saved what? you? Two cattle came at you. Yeah, they came at you and they rolled on you. Now, hold on, what no, happened? No, no, they should got that wrong, no, Darren, no, no, what no. What happened no, with the no, cattle? No, How were you no, killed no, by no, cattle? No, no. No, they fell on I you. I was on a farm and, 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 and I was down the chart, the chart was smashing two. What, what was that you just said? Smashing two? No, two cattle smashed him in two. <laughs> Again, has this been broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you look in the corner, it has been broadcast. But his hair, she's had all the time in makeup and they've just not had time before they got he on air to do it. it. <laughs> Why have they got a Britain's Got Talent buzzing? <laughs> Yes, oh, that wow. is Brilliant. amazing. I love it. Well, there we go. I got worried because my mum said, you're on the news. And I thought, what have I done? <laughs> what, <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> the photos have leaked. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. That was The Woke That Was continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was. The leader of Extinction Rebellion, or as I prefer to call them, the Stink Bomb Rebellion, because of their personal hygiene, has been exposed as a hypocrite uh, who drives diesel cars and has been seen <laughs> shopping at Waitrose to buy imported fruit. Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised about this No, I was going to say, is anybody genuinely bit. surprised by this no, story? No, and I mean, they're, they're all the, the... These people that are doing this are... are children or very well-off families. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. They, some of them I know have flown private jets. Mm -hmm. uh, and one we had on Talk TV, and they hadn't even got the facts of why they were doing yeah. this. Yeah. They didn't have any yeah. idea that's, of why that's they the were thing. really, truly doing it. Lizzie, it's like they've been brainwashed. Lizzie, I want to ask you this question because it's something that I'm just not sure about, and it's, it's this. Is, are they people who are just so rich and so entitled that they don't care and, and it's, they're just having a bit of fun? Or are they attempting to do something more sinister, which is mitigate the fact they've benefited so much from capitalism by pretending they object to it? Do that for a couple of years and then they can go and work at Goldman Sachs. Yeah, I, I, I actually agree with See, that. I, and I, I think I, they, I would they, they've become a there. cult. I think they've become I, a I cult. I would disagree there because I don't think they've got the level of self-awareness to, th mm, to actually think yeah. that far ahead. I, yeah. actually went I actually went down to West to have a look at what was going on because it's cheaper than a West End theatre ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and um, honestly, what I was it's staggered. There was I, there was a significant amount of people there. That's mm. the one thing I will give them. They did pull a crowd, but I just call it the rage of the entitled yeah. because yeah. I don't Absolutely. get what the kind of metrics are for winning because the government has not given in to them. Then mm. the government is very unlikely to give in to them into these demands. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how are they quantifying a success here mm. because. I I, I've, I've worked in campaigns quite a lot, and you know we look at how much the public are really talking about this, uh, the kind of issues that they're bringing up. No one's talking Pete, about them, they're, but they're Pete. talking about them in a negative fashion, Pete, not in a positive. Pete, way. they are calling for 
what I would describe as a, a, a supreme Soviet, yeah. Yeah. a people's assembly. That is to abolish democracy, that's to abolish the government, that's to abolish the independent judiciary, and to sense the media, and instead let them all get together yeah. as a self-selecting oligarchy, a supreme Soviet, and decide everything. Because yeah. the problem they've got is, and this is the big issue, most people, uh, you know, who are campaigning out there and whatever, uh, you know, will go through democratic means. They can't because nobody agrees with them. Exactly. Yeah. But do you not feel they've been brainwashed? It's like they are, oh, like, in some I cult. More, yeah. I, I really yeah. do feel they've been brainwashed. I, I, so watched, and, it, and why don't sorry. they put all their energies into, um, you know, going to China, India, where their emissions yeah. are so huge? Yeah. Like, we've got 1% here. No, I just um, think it's absolutely terrifying. And I think that this is the way that the world's going to go. I think that a lot more young people are growing up on this, you know, with this generation, like you see this on Instagram, it's like a kind of social media politics. You've got the infographics and they read a few, you know, a few infographics and think they know everything about mm. climate change. And I think the majority of these activists are very privileged, very out of touch with society, mm. and they don't actually understand what they're talking about because the majority of them that you actually talk to one on one, they're just shouting the most outlandish talking mm, points exactly. with no understanding or no evidence behind what but, they're but saying. Before, before we move on, Lacey, I just mm. want to ask this. You know, I've got I've got a major concern here that these people have been wound up and, and it's causing mental health problems. Uh, you know, these people being told, young kids being told that they're going to die burning. Yeah. When, when, you know, I don't know what it is, like the rainforest is going to set fire or they're going to choke to death mm. age 25. I mean, that is something that schools should be apologising for. Isn't Definitely. It? Well, I think it's terrifying to be a child now because you're going to die yeah. from, from X, yeah. Y and Z. You can't say that. You can't go to this place. Mm. You need to be this certain mm. way in, in your outfit. Exactly. It's, it's awful. Um, but uh, no, uh, the, this rally that just happened, I believe you're not, I think they had either petrol or diesel generators yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. which is utterly hypocritical. But as Anna rightly said, these people, uh, the, they're only there because they're privileged and entitled. It's so easy to be at the top and consider looking down. When you're yeah. actually at the bottom and understand the hardships, mm -hmm. it doesn't become your priority. Yeah, yeah exactly. But also, when you out, interview but also, them, but they don't know what they're doing. They but, don't know what the fact is. But you know, more than that, you know, they go out in the middle of the week, they clearly are just relying on mummy and daddy, and yeah. I, I can say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're relying on mummy and daddy's bank account because they, they've got no jobs and they can do these protests and that's yeah. all that consumes their lives. They're utterly deluded and frankly, we should do, be doing more to stop them. No, I actually think that this is going to take over so much that we might see, start seeing climate lockdowns. I genuinely think that this is something that's going to happen and that's Very absolutely worrying. terrifying. Uh, has the leader of Extinction Rebellion been exposed as a giant hypocrite for driving a diesel car and buying imported fruit from Waitrose? Is it true or false? It's true. It's absolutely true! <laughs> okay. So, children's classic Thomas the Tank Engine is getting a modern makeover. Wait for it. <laughs> Well, you know what's coming. Cool. Uh, the BBC has commissioned a new series called Thomas the Trans Engine, <laughs> featuring a gender-fluid locomotive. You know, I don't actually find that funny at all. I think that's absolutely <gasps> terrifying. Oh, it's, a, it's a little bit no, funny. It's, it's, it's not, bit I don't think it's funny because I think that th what they're trying to do is subvert their ideology onto children and just have them gr grow up with these ideas. And this is something that we're seeing in schools as well. It's like they want to perpetuate this in every area of our society. Anna, Anna can, can you explain to me? <laughs> can you explain? And, and I suspect you can't, but maybe you can. Can you explain to me why it's inappropriate for the for Roald Dahl to describe somebody as fat in his book uh, and it has to be edited, yet you can read pornography to five-year-olds in a thong and get them to put money into that thong and that's deemed totally and that's, appropriate. And it's not appropriate. That's not something that I would be, you know, that's not something that I would be wanting to see whatsoever. Um, obviously, they're very different things and that's very, that's almost very paedophilic, the fact that this is allowed. But for them, how they justify it is, oh, this is about body. It, you know, we saw a sex, it was at the Naked Education show mm. that's happening on Channel 4. Oh. It's all about... It was revolting. It's it? absolutely that was disgusting. disgusting. And it's, it's all about just getting children um, basically just to see, you know, adult body. It's just, it's completely perverse. It's all for the ratings. And I just think this is something that's going to keep perpetuating further and further. And it's just, it's horrific. So uh, is it true or false that there's <laughs> going to be a TV show called Thomas the Trans Engine? What do you reckon? Um, I could, you know what, I could see that being true. Yeah. It is false. Oh, 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 well, that's good. There we go. Thomas was going down the tunnel and had Thomas wasn't going down. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was just a rumour. Uh, so it's 50 yeah. points each. Okay, so to um, to Anna, sorry, to um, Lizzie and to Pete. 
OK, the CEO of Ryanair has claimed Britain will rejoin the EU in 15 years when all these delusional Brexiteers have died. <laughs> Oh. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> that was very good. I, I yes. assume that was supposed to be was Irish, that, was but that, Chinese that was Chinese. That was one of your best, actually. Yes. Yeah. I'm a citizen of the Irish Republic, aren't Yeah. Okay. No, so th this is typical of this lunatic yeah. of a man. He I, he's like he's so wrapped up in the Remain establishment narrative that the only way forward for the world is is the European Union. But the, when the reality is that the single market is actually in decline compared to the rest of the like uh, emerging markets. So the, the government has just signed itself up to these, this Trans-Pacific mm. Partnership, which is a huge, will, will eventually be a bigger boost than the single market is. Mm. And it's just, it's, Again, it's this idea that they... the only way for the country to move forward is to be in the ah. EU, which is just fundamentally ah, untrue. But, but Lizzie, is he right? Now, let me ask you why, why I say that. Because, look, it was older people that voted to leave the European Union, not exclusively, but, but they certainly, if, if the election was between, say, 18 to 25-year-olds, we'd have voted Remain. My own view is that that's because young people are idealistic and don't understand the EU, whereas older people do. But I might be wrong. It may well be that younger people just love abolishing democracy, big bureaucracy, and Jean-Claude Juncker's drinking habit. <laughs> 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 the, the, la the, la the latter of which I approve of. <laughs> yeah. Look, the majority voted the people's vote for Brexit, whether yeah. you like yeah. it or not. And I'm sick of these people going on and on that we've got to return yeah. to the EU. We now have got Brexit done, finally. It's mm. taken too I, long. I went... I went to a debate in Northern Ireland with a load of young people. I mean, I virtually didn't make it out alive. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they were saying, they were saying, it's a disgrace. We weren't 18 when the referendum happened. We should <laughs> rerun it now. Now we're 18. And I said, but if you did that, if you had that rule, you'd rerun it every, every single day. day. Yeah. And then I thought, to be yeah. fair, that's what Keir Starmer yeah. wants anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But the Tories didn't really want Brexit to happen. No. That's the I trouble. Think... And it, it got botched. Brexit mm. got botched. See, I, I, the I, the that's one that's thing I would problem. pick up on what you just said there, Lizzie, is that we've got Brexit done. I don't think we have. No. I, I no, think, I think this is one of the biggest problems is... When the referendum result came in, Remain didn't stop campaigning, but Brexit did. Yes. yes. And I think yes. that is where a lot of this problem stems from. Mm. And a lot of the issues that we're facing with the European Union over things like the border, um, like mm. border checks and yep. all the rest of it, is actually an administrative problem, not an ideological one. Brexit was my first legal vote when I was 18, just to... Show my wow. age there. Um, and I was very, very proud. On this I, was side very of the room. <laughs> I was very proud to vote for Leave. It was a vote for the prosperity of, of the United Kingdom in whichever way it went forward, but I didn't see that future within the EU. I voted for John Major. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I voted Hello. for Tony Blair. Now, that is something. Which... Oh dear. Oh voted dear. For John. <laughs> oh, gray, gray. Okay. Oh. So has the CEO of Ryanair <laughs> been gobbing off about the EU again? Yes. yes. True. It's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> that was the woke that was continues after the break. Welcome back to that was the woke that was. Greg's has been banned from selling sausages after 11 p.m. in Leicester Square after uh, police feared yeah, yeah. it would lead to a crime wave. Now, Lacey, this is an ideal yeah. question for you. Sadiq Khan just has a tendency now of just focusing on the absolute non-issues, the issues mm. that might get him a couple of tick boxes for the woke brigade in, in the left wing of his party. Um, but no, what, 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 where has the focus gone? Away from the scabbings and the knife yeah. crimes and the crime generally that's existing in London. You know, why is that not his... Why are we talking it's about, about sausage rolls? I, I want to ask you this question, and I'll be a bit careful on it, but... It always seems that, you know, Greg's is a non-halal restaurant. Mm. It, and it always seems that, you you know, the late night takeaways, the kebab shops seem to be open and you can't open a Greg's. Is there a link there or am I just a nutter? Mm. The Mayor of London is just concentrating on, on yeah. not the right things. Yes. I mean, it's, it is lawless London. It is it, the knife crime. Everything has got, has got so mm. much worse under him. And he wants everyone to walk. What he's doing to the motorist is just... Well, he's got, of yeah, course, of course he's got his own motorcade, hasn't he, yeah. mm. uh, old Sadiq? I mean, I find him just a remarkable, a remarkable hypocrite, but a remarkable campaigner, though, Adam. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he is amazing at blaming other people for his own mm. failings. I mean, the example I always give, so apologies for being repetitious, <laughs> is yeah. the example of when he didn't supply PPE 
uh, to um, bus drivers. And the reason he didn't do it, even though he was responsible, was he said the government hadn't told him, therefore <laughs> it was the government's fault oh. he hadn't done it. Yeah. yeah, just blame someone else rather than taking but responsibility. But he, he, he's, he's very good at it, though, Anna. Yeah. Yeah, he's very oh, good he's at great. it. He's very good at getting the public on side. But I do, uh, I do agree with everyone else. I think that he's focusing on completely the wrong issues. Like, so, you know, friends of mine that, you know, work in London or live in London, I know so many people who've had, you know, been mugged or been attacked just even from walking, you know, especially at night. And I think that they're kind of disregarding those issues a lot more and just focusing on stuff that doesn't matter and no one really but cares is, about. Is there an argument now, Anna, for saying this, that um, what the police want to do is shut down fun because they can't be bothered policing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Probably. And I think that I think it's gone so out of control that they're probably just trying to, you know, especially with this, they're like they're just trying to cover a basis there. And I think that they're focusing on completely the wrong issue. Well, I've think, got to, I've well, got to say, I've got to say on the issue of policing, Sadiq Khan and uh, Baroness Casey agreed that Cressida Dick presided over a misogynistic and homophobic organisation. Now, of all the things you could say about yeah. Cressida Dick, massive homophobic <laughs> sexist is not it's, one of them. Can I, can I just <laughs> piggyback off of that point there? So, uh, the, it's actually the Westminster Council that have said that this is a half-baked plan, which I thought was quite a good pun for a council. And the police have complained about it because it will bring crime. What they don't tell you is that just further down the road is the Hippodrome Casino. Yes. And so, which is a 24-hour casino where they sell That's alcohol and people are gambling and stuff. So surely that would bring more crime to the well, exactly. yeah. than a Greg's. So has Greg's <laughs> uh, been banned from serving sausages after 11 o'clock in Leicester Square just in case it caused crime? Is it true or false? True. True, yeah. It's absolutely true! <laughs> OK. According to reports, Judge Rinder is being lined up as the new Conservative candidate for Mayor of London. True or false? Oh, now, I'm friends with Rob. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hell's I could give him a little ring. Everybody take a shot. No, Rob. <laughs> OK, 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 I'll admit something. I used to be on the debating circuit. I was the University of London A-team, as Rob Rinder was the University of Manchester A-team. I've known him since he was 18. And I said to him, I used to work at City Hall. I'm happy to help. And he said, I'm absolutely not running under any circumstances. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but I have to say, if you want a celebrity, the one they should get is David Beckham. He's a solid Conservative. He's from Chingford. Um, he ran, or virtually ran, the bid for the 2012 Olympics. He's a global star. Mm. And I think he's so desperate for the knighthood that he probably do it. No, I don't think you'll ever get that well, knighthood after the World Cup. I'm sorry, but I would love Rob Rinder, and he is great. He, I think he'd be inspirational. He wants to do the right thing. Look what he did with Ukraine. Did you see yeah. that went out and helped out there? He went to the border the, for a bit. No, he, <laughs> won, he, he went did, to the border. He genuinely for a bit. cares. He genuinely yeah, cares. Yeah, that, that I will get. I've seen, when he's presented this morning and he's done segments on that, I, I will agree with him that. Interestingly, I, when this, because I, I, I know this story to be true because I've I read the article on it, um, I saw the social media comments on it and the number of people that didn't realise he was a conservative. I found absolutely, <laughs> they, people felt betrayed by it. And I was, right. because, but the, the one thing is, it's because he was critical of the government over COVID and some of the others. People just yeah. naturally presumed he was. Know, which know, tells you so much he about was in, I was I was sat at a meeting of Greater Manchester Manchester Conservatives Future, which was the name of the Young Conservatives with Rob Rinder there in the 90s. It might not be in the 90s, it was whenever William Hague was leader of the Conservatives and there was a resolution at the committee to write to William Hague congratulating <laughs> him. And Rob Rinder, having said nothing at the committee meeting, piped up with, why are we writing to him saying he was a good leader? <laughs> it was effing crap. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which I thought was probably a fair but, comment. But Rob Rinder is so straight and honest. And yeah. whenever he no, when he asks me, when he asks me a terrible. question, he always says, I can smell a lie like a fart in a lift. <laughs> and that's what he always says. Yeah. Does, but, he, does he often go round lifts? <laughs> round lifts, yes. I, sure. No, but I think he would be great. Look, it, anything it be better than the one we have at the minute. Sadiq Khan and Rob mm. Rinder debate each other. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. Because they're both, they're both uh, legally trained. So, mm. you know, and they both got experience. Like, as no, 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 no. I'm sorry to say this, but somebody who used to sue police for a living in the South London practice versus a barrister who got to the who got to the finals of the Euro, of the world debating championships Rinder will beat him. <laughs> it will. Hard, yeah. hard and, hands the down. No, but what, what I would say onto that is though is that like as we've just been talking about how Khan never takes responsibility or anything yeah. Rinder would mm -hmm. push him 
again and again and again on this issue. And it would be, I think Sadiq yeah. Khan would really answer struggle the question. actually answer <laughs> yeah. the question. And stop and nice. deflecting and putting yeah, it on yeah. everyone I'm talking. else. I'm talking. I'm talking, yeah. I'll tell you what, though. I do understand CCHQ's uh, kind of mentality behind this, because obviously they had yeah. Sean Bailey, who did... Disastrous. No, he didn't. He okay. did a lot better well, than people expected. Okay, though. he did. He didn't do as well as people well, as, as they well, would have hoped. Let's say he that. Didn't win. Um, so I understand why they're kind of like, okay, well, let's go for a completely different approach. We're not going for this uh, lower class black, you know, yeah. Jack the Lad kind of figure. We're going to go completely to the other end of the spectrum and provide, you know, a bit of a celebrity figure. So I understand why they're trying to trying to pull this name out. But mm. will it actually work? There's I also, highly doubt yeah. it. Charlie Mullins, Pimlico Palmer's, he's pretty cat in the yeah. ring as well. Charlie Mullins, literally that face. <laughs> I mean, where did it come from? It, it's Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Rod Stewart's twin. I actually <laughs> always thought he was Rod Stewart. At one point. <laughs> yeah, I did too when I met him. <laughs> I thought he was. Well, at least old drainage. He's sort of that. He's sort of like that. He's going, going. Yes, the drainage yeah. is going really well. This is absolutely. <laughs> he will solve I, I, all I, I, our plumbing problems. You know, there's interesting because when I was growing up, I watched Rod, uh, Judge Rinder. I loved Judge Rinder Judge, when, yeah. I, yeah, when I was young. Um, but I think it's very interesting that a lot of the public felt betrayed when they found yeah. he was conservative, and they didn't realise he was because he was criticising the party. Yeah. But I think, like you know, my, I'm. Myself, uh, I'm a Conservative Party member, but I was very critical of them because I didn't agree with their draconian lockdown measures and everything like that. But I think even if you even if you are on the right side with your political values and you criticise the party, they'll just automatically assume you're left wing. Yeah. But, do, but do you not think, Anna, on that subject, do you not think that what people are angry about... Uh, see, I'm a Conservative Party member as well, yeah. but what people are angry about is this slavish adherence mm -hmm. when the party leadership's terrible. You know, yeah. I wouldn't say that the leadership of the Labour Party is any good. I don't think the leadership of the Conservative yeah. Party is any good. I think the SNP... I mean, if I was an SNP member, I'd be absolutely yeah. depressed. No, oh, it, actually, de it's it's so that. depressing because we literally do not have any good leaders. The Conservative no. Party's not Conservative. And actually, I struggle to tell much difference between Conservative or Labour because at the moment, they're on this kind of both sides on a, this attack campaign where they will say whatever they need to say to get into power, to get into number 10, especially Keir Starmer. I do not trust anything that he no, says. No. Um, like, I can't even define what a woman is for, like, well, exactly. for a start, which I think is the basic thing you need to do to actually be in power in the first place. And I have to say, I think Labour's uh, ad, their attack ads on Rishi uh, are disgusting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, they're lies. They I mean, awful. they are lies. Do you know what I'm they like... should do? Why don't they just tell us what Rishi Sunak actually said and did? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah well, they've yeah. got his smiling face with his little funny signature underneath. And you know what? It's just a I downright know, I lie. I actually think it's the signature that annoys me the most in that, in that because it, it's, it's as though somehow he's, he's like, endorsed it. it. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think that's so dishonest. <laughs> but, the one, but the one thing, Pete, I will say, I was reading Margaret Thatcher's autobiography, why did it take me that long? Um, <laughs> but what she was saying was, she was saying about Neil Kinnock, she said what she really didn't respect about him was it was, and I think she used the phrase, a fundamentally disreputable project mm. to attempt to market the Labour Party. Because what you are doing is, you are taking a group of MPs who hate Britain, who hate our culture, our heritage, our history, who want to rip apart our school system, destroy the private sector, and, and, and get them elected by pretending they're not going to do exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. and that's where Neil Kinnock went wrong. If you remember back in the day where he thought he'd won he'd won it, you remember? Yeah. He thought he was going to be our next Prime Minister. Hmm. There was this big campaign about Jennifer's ear. I don't know if you remember this. Jennifer's uh, ear. Uh, Jennifer's ear. And it all backfired on him with this using this ad campaign yeah. with this little girl who had glue ears. And the same will happen to Keir Starmer with their awful attacking just, ads. I'm it's just, not going to work. I'm just praying that Rishi Sunak isn't the next John Major. Yeah. Please, God. Please, God, yeah. you can tell Well, he's, he's been in office six months. Six, yeah, six, six months, months this week. Uh, yeah. And uh, for me, though, I did, I'm not happy how he treated Dominic Raab. He should have stuck up oh, for him that's, that's and a stood whole by thing, him. Isn't it? We've lost a major beast. Well, I mean, I, I, I worry about this because what they're now saying is that the civil service should be able to make complaints against cabinet ministers and cabinet ministers should be sacked on that basis. That's that, I'm afraid, is what's commonly known as a coup d'etat. Well, yeah. it's ad advisers are to advise, it's ministers to decide. OK. And um, I'm very worried about it. Mm. So can you decide whether Rob Rinder, Judge Rinder, we should call him Judge Rinder, yeah. shouldn't we? Judge well, I, actually, we shouldn't, because he's not a judge. He's not. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think he's <laughs> a judge it's anymore. It's almost like Alan Partridge. It's like Alan Partridge. No, Rinder is not a qualified judge. <laughs> um, but, OK, has uh, Rob Rinder, the barrister and uh, star of Judge Rinder, been invited to be the Conservative candidate for Mayor of London. It's true. It's true. It is true! <laughs> that was The Woke That Was, continues after the break. Welcome back to That Was The Woke That Was.
Keir Starmer appeared on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire last week, but was eliminated because the first question was, what is a woman? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, come on. Look, look, I know the writing on this show isn't always brilliant, but that, my friends, that is a little corker. Brilliant. There you go. Corker. The thing with Keir Starmer, he's got a wife with two kids. She's the one that's really worried about it. Yeah. They never know what a woman is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just demonstrates how ideologically he captured he is in the entire Labour Party is the fact he can't even define what a woman is. And what terrifies me about him most likely getting to power and becoming the next Prime Minister is the fact that if he can't even define what a woman is, you know, women's only spaces, like toilets, they're not going to be safe. Um, we're going to have biological men, well, not just men, I'm not shouldn't even say biological men, we should, you know, men will be using those spaces. But you, there's women's only sports will now, you know, be taken over by men. And I think that just shows a really dangerous trend that we're going to see. But the reality is, Lacey, mm. He does know what a woman is. He yes. just doesn't care, which I think is even more disturbing. Or, or is he just pretending to do it to try and garner up some kind of faux reputation? I mean, mm. God knows what the incentive behind it, what's actually, you know, the, the clock, uh, cogs are working in his yeah. brain. <laughs> um, apparently, mine aren't working today <laughs> either. <laughs> so, on this, um, there's just two points I'd, I'd quickly make. Is We have to remember about, it's about six weeks ago, Labour strategist came out to the media and said that if Keir Starmer did not change his position on the issue of women mm. and women-only spaces, that he would lose the next general election. Yes. He, and, they, and I think they're completely right on that. But the, and the other one on, on this, I, I would really make a point is, this is all of Keir Starmer's own making. Yeah. Like you said, I do believe that Keir Starmer knows what a woman is and is trying to play different groups just to get votes. Well, yeah. But, but one second, happy. wasn't it? But he the other thing is, the, reason, the Labour Party is now suffering a significant backlash within itself from the LGBT group because they feel very let down by Keir Starmer for yeah. not backing their side. So somehow he's managed to get women against him and on and the LGBT but group. That's because he, he just can't make Because he doesn't mind. have any true values. That's, that's the thing. And that's what the problem. He'll just keep flip-flopping on this he issue. Is the human and I think when it comes nearer to the time of the general election, his position will change publicly on it again. Yeah. Well, it will. Which actually ter but, that's but, 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 no, but hang on a second now. No. Let, me, yeah. let, me, let me ask you this, because I don't, I don't disagree with you, but I'm just trying to think about that. What does he do? He goes on TV and goes, I've now discovered what a woman is. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 well, he's put himself in, in a same, difficult yeah. position, in, in, the same, in the same way as, like, your average 13-year-old, yeah. I've suddenly discovered <laughs> wow. what Wow. <laughs> I think the thing is, because I think later on, he'll try and, you know, dampen it down, you just predict, like, oh, give it some time. And then I see next, you know, probably, let's say, give it a few months or near the time of the general election, he will suddenly come out that a woman is a, you know, an adult human female, and then he'll get lots of praise. But lots Lacey, of yeah. Lacey, Lacey, can he... Can he actually resolve this problem? Because the reality is, time and time again, the leader of the Labour Party is the person that covers over the creatures that lurk in the Labour Party. Mm. Yeah. And the reality is, there are people in the Labour Party who genuinely, genuinely think that girls who are worried about men in their bathrooms and toilets should not go to school anymore because they're just discriminatory people. Of course he can redeem himself. I mean, he just has to find the balls in which to do it, ironically. Or to shut me, to shut me, me man. I just, I simply don't understand after the whole Corbyn anti-Semitism yes. fiasco, why the next leader didn't come in headstrong, say, this is what I believe in, this is what I stand for. Instead, we've had this leader who simply stands for nothing or what he doesn't no. know, but, he doesn't stand he for. He sits on the fence on every issue. He sits on the fence Absolutely. anymore. He gets like splintered. Okay. Just to give Keir Starmer just a little bit of credit here. Oh, no. No, 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 no,
what is a woman? Is it true or false? That would have been everywhere on social media. Yeah. So I'm going to say false. I tell, I tell you what, he definitely wouldn't have been able to, because to even get in that seat, you have to be the first. <laughs> the first, first, thing first. <laughs> and you can't decide anything. So it has, it has to be false. You can't make any decisions. OK, uh, it is absolutely false. Yay! Well done. Yay! That DVD is now heading towards you. Now, I'm off. We did talk about Soho, Leicester Square and the surrounding areas. <laughs> I'm off to take Keir Starmer to some specialist establishments so I can show him what a woman is. More <laughs> next week. <laughs> Goodbye. Will they break the gender norm and they never will conform? Then I'm back. It's here! Now that's what I call woke! She's always a person with a cervix to me. 44 smash hits, now with more inclusive lyrics. Man, I feel gender fluid. Iconic tunes updated for the modern listener. Love is to the left of me, vegans to the right, here I am, stuck on the M1 with you. I want to know what a woman is. Here in my car, I am killing the earth with my toxic exhaust. It's a selfish way to live. No trigger warning required. Oh, the wokey cokey. Whoa, the wokey cokey. Oh, my little Europhile, my Europhile. When you gonna follow me back, Ramona? Now that's what I call woke. Not streaming now.